The January terrorist attacks in Paris raised concerns enough for President Obama to schedule the long postponed summit. The aim is to go after the root causes of extremism and find ways to stop young people from joining terrorist groups like the Islamic State. The president holding a summit that no one really seems to know what its focus is. We have presidential candidates talking. We have former confidants trying to make a buck here and there. Guess what? It is all just life inside the Beltway, the seamy underbelly of the nation's capital. So let's go inside the Beltway, get the truth. Newsmax chief political columnist and White House correspondent, John Gizzi. John, pleasure to see you again in that seamy, snowy underbelly. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. I uh, had one colleague who called it that sad swamp on the Potomac. There Another called it the work-free drug place. <laughs> I, uh, I actually worked in Washington, D.C. for uh, a year. I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, let's go ahead and get this thing started here. First of all, just, John, from your side here, the president holding this extremism summit here, and so many people are basically just laughing at it, saying, look, nothing's going to get done. There's no real reason for this. What's the overall hubbub in Washington about this? What are the insiders saying? Well, I just came from the White House where Press Secretary Josh Ernst almost made me late for your program because he was holding forth for a while on You this better stuff. tell Josh Ernest that that's th just not going to be allowed in this case, buddy. You tell him he answers to the redhead if that happens, all right? Uh-oh. Okay. okay. I, <laughs> uh, I'll let you email him on that, okay. Ed. Um, the fact is I saw quite a larger number than usual of my colleagues from overseas. So I can say that among the foreign press, there is interest uh, if that's too strong a word, it's curiosity. Also, we know the presence of Federica Mohorini, the foreign minister of the European Union, and that gives some stamp of gravitas on the meeting. Now, in terms of content, uh, the White House is saying nothing on that, and they'll probably release a statement when this is all over. One thing is there, several reporters tried to pin Josh Ernest down on why the president does not use the term radical Islam. Uh, the White House's defense, of course, is that so many of those who are extremists try to identify with the religion of Islam. Um, before he died, we know that Osama bin Laden had memoranda saying he was considering changing the name of Al-Qaeda to something more closely identified with Islam. Uh, groups like the Congolese warrior and warlord Joseph Kony calls his group militant Christians. Now, that said, this was a matter of debate over semantics in terms of substance for countering terror or anything else, nothing yet. All right, here's something else that comes up to mind right away. Eric Holder said that we are not at a time of war, at, at, which sort of landed like a lead balloon when he said that because everybody else is seeing what's going on here. What's basically the scuttlebutt around the hill? And again, not just from the White House, but from the other reporters and the people who follow politics there. Well, a lot of the other reporters are dusting off the fact that the administration chose to use an inside Washington bureaucratese to describe what was formally called, and certainly was called in the previous administration, the War on Terror. And they do not want to use the term war, even though, as former President George W. Bush said, we are in a form of asymmetric warfare we've never faced before. Uh, fighting an enemy that's not from a state but from a movement and that is very mysterious in its movements. Uh, the administration does not want to use that term because they simply don't want to say we're at war. As to why, we're going to have to keep pressing the press secretary for a reason why. About 30 seconds here, and the judge in Texas who basically uh, landed his assault on immigration and the president's immigration bill for the moment temporarily blocking the programs. Uh, are Republicans celebrating this, or do they realize that this is just a, a temporary step in what's going to be a war that still will be tough to win? Well, Republicans are celebrating victory in a minor battle, but they know there has to be several battles that the field is going to be long. The White House knows this, too. Josh Ernest told us that the administration does plan to appeal, that they do believe it is wrong, and they will go all the way in protracted adjudication on this matter. Now, the big question is going to be whether Congress continues with Plan A, and that is stopping the funding of the Department of Homeland Security. Josh Ernest has already begun waving a red flag on this, saying it would be unfair to do so, 
to the employees of the department, and certainly a terrible time to do this in the face of the world's problems. There you go. Uh, we will see where this goes. February 27th is zero hour on DHS funding. Zero hour for us. We're all out of time. John, thanks so much for joining us, my friend. Stay warm. We'll talk to you soon. I'll be back and I'll give Josh your message. There you I'll go. I'll screw up the current. <laughs> Midpoint continues.